And we are live. Welcome to this weekly interview that is uh, brought to you by the CUNY School of Professional Studies. Today we have a very special guest, and that guest is Matt Lewis, the one and only Matt Lewis, uh, <laughs> who is in our Office of Faculty Development and Instructional Technology, better known as OFDIT. Uh, but since we love acronyms here at SPS, uh, I, I rather say the Office of Faculty Development and Instructional Technology. Is that correct, Matt? Am I That's using correct. the acronym uh, or, 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 or using the name correctly? Yeah, we, we love our acronyms for sure. So it's OFTED is, our, is the name we like to call ourselves. So it's the Office of Faculty Development and Instructional Technology. Excellent. And I'm an instructional design and multimedia manager in said office. So. That's awesome. So today <laughs> we are... We, we are for the first time, uh, we have been conducting this weekly interviews for about three, four months now. Uh, but today we're doing for the first time, we are simulcasting or live streaming simultaneously into three uh, social media platforms. We're doing it on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. So if anyone is listening to this or watching this and wants to make uh, a comment or uh, ask a question or just say hi on the comment section of wherever you're watching this from, uh, please do so now and we would love to hear from you. So if you are on LinkedIn watching or YouTube or Facebook and want to say hello, uh, we would really enjoy that. And also, of course, we would enjoy um, listening to your questions and trying to do our best to respond to them. So Matt, absolutely. Yeah. Let's start as I typically like to do by listening to a bit of your story. Uh, how did you get into higher education within higher education? Why uh, media and, and production, or maybe it was the other way around. You started with media and then moved to higher ed. So whatever, whatever that order was and why, uh, yeah. I think our audience would love to know. Yeah, it's a, I'm glad I'm, I'm I'm glad you prefaced this with a little bit of the story because it is kind of a long story. So I'll I'll try to do my best to give it uh, just a little bit. Um, I think it was sort of both at the same time. So um, I come from a family of educators, and uh, also sort of grew up always with a camera in my hand. So I'm always I've always had you know the 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 eye for a photographer, but I. Uh, I guess in college, I pursued uh, sort of a, an alternative path altogether. I went into environmental health and safety, and I worked mm -hmm. in Silicon Valley for a number of years as a, a, a developing online uh, asynchronous training. Uh, and that's where I got into um, uh, being an instructional designer. Uh, I did my master's degree at uh, uh, Massachusetts in Boston. So I was uh, on the East Coast for a spill. And uh, in there, I also taught. I was a teacher for about five years. And I taught English as a second language, but I did it overseas. So I taught English in uh, Japan, South Korea, Vietnam, and then for a couple of years in Turkey. So I've, I've, oh. I've got classroom experience doing uh, you know, teaching in, the, in the higher ed and then uh, instructional design in the corporate world. And, uh, and always through all of that, this love for uh, media and creating media. And uh, it was probably my last job where I really sunk into um, a style of teaching called, you know, or at least uh, using a strategy in teaching called digital storytelling. And so uh, we had a pretty big uh, uh, movement of the faculty and students all creating these digital stories. And I really got into media production. Uh, and that was probably about, I don't know, eight or 10 years ago. <laughs> and so, uh, so I really dove into, you know, creating media and being that, uh, the media person. So that's where my skill set lies. And now at CUNY, um, we are in this lovely studio now that we have with this amazing screen that's behind me. And so we get to you know, uh, experiment and try new things and innovate with, with uh, video production, you know, starting now. <laughs> this is the first time we're doing a live stream in here too. So it's, it's an exciting uh, event for, uh, I should give a shout out to my colleague who's on the, the ones and twos behind the camera, Sharon Joran, she's here. So she's, she's the one back there making sure the camera's working. <laughs> that's fantastic. And, and let yeah. me ask you, uh, Matt, How's your Korean? Are you too rusty on it or? I am so rusty. It was, it's, 
I knew how to say like onion haseyo, you know, that's like hello, basically. But at the time when I lived there, you really get into survival language. And that's something, you know, like sort of a, a discovery in how people learn. You know, I really learned that, you know, when it's when it's when it's really meaningful to you <laughs> and you need to use it, you're gonna learn it pretty quickly. So things like getting around, directions, counting numbers, that kind of stuff I was pretty, I was pretty good with in Korean, but as soon as you stop using any sort of language like that, you know, it, it at least for me anyway, it's gone. But, so, uh, so you you came back to the States and got into this wonderful world of uh, media production for for uh, higher education and course development and design and multi yeah. yeah now you're playing with a new toy so t tell us tell us a little bit about that new toy that we're using at, at SPS well we have um, an LED wall behind me which is about I mean it's 16 by 9 in terms of aspect ratio so I'm not exactly sure what the measurements are but it's around uh, 11 feet by uh, eight feet so it's pretty big I actually have a couple pictures here in my slide deck Okay. If you just give me a sec, I can find it. Uh, so here's, I'll just put this up. So behind me is, uh, here, I'll just step over, step over the side here. You can see I'm standing uh, uh, in the middle of the, the room here, and we yeah. have Darian on the camera this day. We have the light set up. We have, uh, right now we're using a Sony A7S II camera, which is a, a mirrorless, uh, very, very uh, great in low light and uh, It was just a great camera. So that's what we're using today. But yeah, this is, a, I mean, I, I kind of forgot what the question was. Sorry. <laughs> I you, were, you were about telling the us gear. about the new toy and how we use it. And uh, but, yeah. but before we even get into more details as to the new LED background and, and what you are uh, experimenting with on, on that particular technology, maybe you can share with our audience What is the process um, that we go through at the School of Professional Studies? As, as uh, some of our audience knows, SPS is the leading online school within CUNY. And uh, we have been doing online teaching and learning for almost 20 years now. Uh, we have 28 programs and uh, have been for several years now recognized by U.S. News as one of the top online programs in the nation. So I would imagine a good portion of that is thanks to you and what Ofdit does and of course our faculty and staff and our students. But tell us about what 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 is what is the process to develop uh, such a, a fantastic content for our online courses? Yeah, I mean the process is pretty lengthy in terms of you know like step one two. I mean I can give you sort of the big picture. Um, But, but basically we start with our faculty in terms of like um, uh, uh, deciding on what they what course they want to develop mm -hmm. or you know a revision to an existing course and uh, uh, there is uh, our team inside the Ofdit, which is the office of faculty development and instructional technology mm -hmm. <laughs> I like to say that fast <laughs> so inside Ofdit, there's a team that's our instructional design team and uh, and they're overseeing that whole soup to nuts uh, online Uh, development. So, it, and, and really the guiding principle is, is backwards design, you know, start with the end in mind. Uh, mm -hmm. And they're, they're putting, they're putting their goals, their outcomes, and their assessments in the foreground saying, hey, these are the things that the student needs to walk out of this, uh, you know, 15 week or seven week or three week course. They need to have this goal. They need to be able to do these outcomes. And here are the assessments that are going to tell us that. And once we have that pretty much figured out, Then we start to build out that course in terms of week one, week two, week three, et cetera, et cetera, or, or module one, unit one, however we want to describe it. Uh, for I'm on what we call, what on our department, we affectionately call the media team. So the media team then steps in uh, and consults with those faculty developers that are building a new course. And uh, we look at sort of, hey, these are some opportunities to do video here. And uh, we can then meet, talk with them, uh, figure out how we can support them and our team really does can do soup to nuts for video we can we have this glorious studio here we now can create some really cool content we also have a, a studio that we've been using on the fourth floor we're on the second floor here uh, that is a, a smaller space that we've been creating content you know since uh, well since i've been here right uh, so so it's 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 then uh, a question of what the video is going to be what's the goal of that video and writing a script and and the typical sort of production process flows and i know that. you have a you have a website 
that is um, for internal use uh, for our faculty and our staff. I don't know if you would like me to share that on screen. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is, I forget which, which, uh, which site that was. Let me. Uh, there you go. See. You probably see it now on screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Media Studio. Yeah, this, so this is actually a public website. So this is a site that we can use, uh, anybody in the world could look at if they wanted to. Um, but the but this was uh, one of the pages in our Faculty Commons site, which is really this whole website. This Faculty Commons is, uh, you know, we can share this out in the in the in the chat if you like. Um, but it's it's really designed to support our faculty and uh, any questions they have about our learning management system, which is Blackboard, uh, the tools that we support within. Uh, within that, uh, we have a video hosting service called Panopto. We have uh, we use asynchronous video discussion boards uh, through voice uh, through voice uh, voice thread. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'm trying to think. Is there any? Did I miss anything? We have a and, we have a you, captioning service that faculty can you can show us the rest of us. the page? Can you drag down the uh, sure. page? Yeah. So this this is highlighting the the studio that we have upstairs. Uh, there's a short video here talking about the kinds of things we can do in the studio, which sort of mirrors what we can do in here, but we have more options now. So this is a brand new space uh, for us. Um, but we have a couple of video examples and a couple of shots of like, hey, there's a uh, you know production that we created um, with a collaboration with the New York Historical Society. And this was right before COVID hit, uh, but it was Ariana DeBose that's in that picture. And she's an Academy Award winning actress. Mm -hmm. yeah. And she came into our studio and. We collaborated with the New York Historical to create an exhibit that went into their museum. So, uh, the, and then I, just some examples of what we were doing with the green screen uh, that we have upstairs. Now we have the LED wall. So that sort of changes the game for us. So, so, so let's stop there the, for, for a second. Um, here, what we're seeing on the screen is Professor Joe Foy, uh, who has or was being recorded at the time at that smaller studio upstairs, and you superimposed an image uh, on the green screen. So, so that was kind of the the previous way of, of doing recording. Now, let me stop sharing that particular um, screen and show us what does the LED allow you to do uh, that, that it's an improvement versus that. Right, right. So the improvement is that the we're no longer doing that chroma key replacement. So the green screen is called, we call it in the video editing sort of timeline, it's called chroma key. And so we don't have to do that anymore. So what we do have to do is be ready with that visual before we start shooting and we can put it on the video wall. Uh, and there's a, probably three or four different ways that we can get images up there. Uh, we have wireless ways, we have wired ways, you know, so there's a lot of options for us to work here. Um, but I think what really comes out great with this um, is uh, the definition between the background and the foreground. So I'm in the foreground and our background, it's, it's a nice, clean separation. Yeah, and I think that really, I don't see that. I don't see that green aura around you like uh, exactly. You right. And um, yeah, like or if you're using like Zoom or, you know, some of the, the virtual backgrounds will have like a little bit of cutting into your, you know, sometimes your hair disappears and then comes back. You know, when you're Do you have any examples background. of uh, video that you can showcase on the LED background? Maybe one of the slides you have on your computer. Oh yeah, you want to see a video back there? Yeah, just to see movement on. on yeah, the absolutely. Let me um, let me just pull up. It's better if I play the video directly from my computer, just because okay. you get a little bit better resolution. But uh, I'm I, wondering I, if, say, a professor is teaching a class and wants to bring some content from the from the web say maybe a video about a uh, subject matter then you could do it right like that you could move to a side and uh, let the students watch the video correct you oh, can right. you can yeah. also insert youtube videos uh, proprietary videos any form of media basically yeah the one thing that we're finding with this is that the the backdrop i don't know if you noticed when we were looking at the slides and maybe i don't know if we can see it here but sometimes we get a little bit of an artifact. I don't know if you can see that right here, that we get these things called amore lines. And so we've been, no, yeah, I don't know if you, can you see it? I cannot, I cannot. 
Oh, okay. So, oh, good. <laughs> so I guess the, the camera you're using is pretty good. So it doesn't show. But the camera's great. And the lens we have on is amazing. So we, we, we have been avoiding that. I think the challenge would be is if, if you wanted to just show a, insert a new video, that we would just cut that in in the edit. Let me see. We, if, I, that, if I do a close up, uh, I might see. Can you play the video again? Yeah. Okay. So I might see a little bit of that. It's like right. And it's in the lighter sort of, you can see it up here a little bit. It's in the lighter colors. And uh, what? It, it's barely noticeable. It's yeah. barely noticeable. I think when we were looking at the slideshow earlier, we saw, I saw it earlier too. But, okay. but so these are sort of like we've been doing in here is, is running test to figure out what the best setting is to, to get that, you know, how far away are we, what aperture do we have, the shutter speed, you know, all those sort of uh, 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 pieces of the puzzle need to fit together to make it look uh, spot on. I think what happens though is that if you start to hard focus on the screen, and if I were to step away, that, uh -huh. that you might see those effects even more. And so it's better just to insert the video and shoot. Now, does the video. camera know where to focus, to focus on you or focus on the video? The, the camera is focusing on me right now. Uh, um, it's on like a continuous autofocus. So if I were to move around, it might change, you know, sort of the focus. Got it. Uh, now, I, I stopped by the studio earlier today and I saw you uh, recording content. Maybe, maybe you can use that as an example of the type of use we're giving the studios. Yeah, absolutely. The kind, the kind of videos. Yeah. So yeah. typically, every course at, at SPS has at least uh, a, a course overview video, uh, you know, some sort of faculty introduction, and um, sometimes like a really short welcome, like, "Hey, this is the course. Here's what you do first. And so, the, the, typically, that, and then, then we, you know, we're doing other more content related. We might do a series of three different kind of short lectures, that kind of thing. So the, those are the types of videos that we do mostly or the course overview ones. Like those those are being made for every new course that comes out here. Um, did I answer the question? Wait, what was, sorry, what was the question? Sure, sure. Can you show us some more examples of the type of backgrounds sure. that you have used? Uh, yeah, so. Uh, this is primarily uh, for the use of the faculty, but it can also potentially be used to record sessions in which we provide uh, advising or orientation to students or, or other student services. Like for instance, we could have our finance, financial aid director being recorded explaining the concept of financial aid and how to apply at the FAFSA. So, so we can use it for that as well. And we have actually two studios uh, like the one you're using right now, correct? Are they yeah. identical? Uh, I think the only difference, yes, they're identical. The only difference being the gear that's in each one. Mm -hmm. So uh, right now we're using the Offit uh, field kit is what we call it. So it's the lights and the camera is that kit. Uh, the marketing has their sort of uh, gear too, which is set up over there. So, uh, and we both are using both. So it's, and we're all, you know, sharing each other's gear. So it's not like, Hey, this is mine. You know, it's, we're, we're, we have a great relationship with the marketing folks. So if, if uh, say a faculty member were interested in testing the system, the new, the new studios, uh, what would you recommend to, to the faculty? Uh, yeah, we have, it would be, I mean, I can give you my email, but you know, it's maybe better if, if we use the faculty support email, but really it starts with just so talking to it on the, I can put it on the comment section. What oh, would it? you? That'd be great. Yeah. It's faculty support at sps.cuny.edu and faculty support is all one word. Mm -hmm. And that that email will, will will alert us to say, hey, you know, this is a faculty at SPS, and we're interested in in doing some video work. That'll get funneled to us, and we can then start talking about what your goals are for that video project. Uh, we've been talking with a couple different departments, like um, Youth Studies. Is we've been talking to the Youth Studies department about doing a series of like uh, role plays where we have young actors. Uh, uh, you know, sort of improvising a case scenario, like a, maybe a conflict resolution type of scenario. Um, that's sort of, you know, that's just in the beginning phases of, of talk. Uh, I think the challenge will be in casting that. So we need some youth uh, looking actors to be able to be on screen for that. Uh, well, the, one, other, one other use I have seen uh, is for that LED background to serve as a gigantic 
some screen. So we, we have held meetings in that studio and uh, the participants who typically on a Zoom uh, desktop or in a desktop would look uh, pretty tiny. They look mm -hmm. almost real life size. So uh, it's a great way to, to have more engagement uh, on meetings. So that's yeah. also a way for our faculty to bring guest speakers to the class or guest lectures to the class in a virtual form, uh, but keep it more engaging and more uh, more attractive. So what, what other uses do you think uh, could, be, could be given to this? Yeah, topic? so one thing that I've been talking to um, one of our uh, faculty nurses, and she wants to do an interview series. I won't say who it is, <laughs> just because we're still talking about it. Good. But she wants to create a series of um, basically sort of talk, tackling, sort of similar to what we're doing here, but maybe five or seven sort of uh, interviews with other nurses about the most salient issues regarding safety and being, you know, the care and, you know, so it's, I'm not a nurse, so I don't know the exact topics. Right. So right. that's something we're looking into. We also are, are launching our own um, media team is launching our own interview series coming soon. And uh, so we'll be, uh, I'll be talking to faculty about teaching and learning uh, and, you know, asking questions like, hey, what's, what's going great in your class and how can we make that happen for other people? You know, sort of recognizing what, uh, what's working well. And then uh, my colleague, Sharon, uh, is uh, going to be taking uh, the other side of the fence, the student side, and saying and talking to about student uh, topics and, you know, what's coming up? When do I need to do X, Y, and Z with my, my uh, you know, enrollments or uh, graduation? Or, you know, being a student and lifelong learning, you know, like, what does it mean? And, and sort of how does, that, how does that play out for you as a student? So, no, let, so me, let me ask you a question. Um, going back to... To this page, um, yeah. you said it sits in the CUNY Academic Commons. It is public. It's, it's available to the public. You don't have. It's to. a public website. Yeah. Right. So you don't need to be a CUNY uh, faculty member. You could be a faculty member from any university uh, or any professional, for that matter. You could be any person on the internet and look at this website. You and, know, when you go to email the, us, the first question is going to be what. What is Sorry. the address for that website? Sorry to interrupt. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, spsfaculty.commons.gc.cuny.edu. It's, it's not the easiest. Well, let me <laughs> I write can put it in the comments here, faculty. I think. Here, I, I can put it in the comments, I think. Please. Should I put it in the comments? Yes, please. If you could, that would be great. Yeah. And I can uh, copy Oh, wait, it. I haven't done the comments before. Here, wait. I've just, uh, I put it in a private chat to you, Jorge. Okay, seeing... I'll take it from the private chat. Yeah. And I will copy it and uh, we'll put it under the comment section. But I gave you the link to basically the, the landing page go. of the site. Ah, oh, uh, that's the media studio. A mouthful, yeah. but you know, yeah. I'll, I'll leave it on for a little bit. So uh, whoever wants to uh, click on it, uh, you can also see it on the comment section of my YouTube channel, faculty support. Oops, I, I think I clicked on the video. gc.cuny.edu media studios. Excellent. Yeah. So I imagine this is a, a website that you continuously populate with new information, with new tips, with new techniques. Yeah. So the under the like we have a multimedia tab and it's, you know, so all the anything multimedia related, you know, we're, we're updating that. We have um, sort of tutorials and guides for Blackboard, for Panopto, yeah. for all sort of different um, you know, technology tools that we use at SPS. Uh, there's trainings and workshops, you know, for SPS faculty. There's uh, a section for e-portfolios, accessibility, a UDL. We have a newsletter that we put out about once a month during the semester okay. that is uh, sort of archived here. Um, so yeah, a lot of stuff. And then and on the home page for the site itself, we put up, you know, announcements, you know, what's happening. Um, you know, we have, let's see, the ally or it just came uh our studio we have uh, sarah's doing a presentation um this is a video that we shot um uh, upstairs for our sort of the first in our series of interviews nice. um yeah so the, yeah so we have a lot of activity that's happening on the site so so what if either a faculty member a member of the staff wants to learn more about how to use this studio. Do you provide any sort of training on 
best practices for recording content, for instance, body language, how to use your hands, how to look at camera, what type of uh, dress code to use. Uh, Absolutely. Kind of training. Yeah. yeah. So when you book a time with us to record, uh, you'll get a lot of information like that. But I think um, sort of that beginning conversation that we have with teachers is always around, hey, what's the goal of this video? You know, how can we get it down like a script that's going to be nice and succinct? We don't want to go over eight minutes. You know, if you look at the scholarship of teaching and learning around video that, you know, six to eight minutes is about the limit of what people will watch. Um, um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be it's going to have a fast pace. It's going to have lots of visuals. Um, you know, all these things make engaging video, but really starting in the beginning and figuring out what that goal is uh, and then having a script written or at least an outline written. And then we can start to have a conversation about, uh, you know, what kind of video we're going to make. Are we going to do it here? Are we going to do it upstairs? Are we going to go outside on the street? You know, that kind of thing. You could actually, uh, I would imagine, you could also include graphical interfaces, right? Um, it could be graphics, it could be images, oh, yeah. it could be- So uh, part of the, the, our media team will, um, you know, will, will source uh, open public domain images, will create some motion graphics, will, um, what, what am I forgetting, Sharon? Sharon's our, one of our lead editors here. What a, uh, like mastering a video, so it has like the quality sound and if there's color correction. During the pandemic, we did a lot of like work with folks remotely. So people were sending us their sort of raw video and we would clean it up and okay. give it back to them. And, and what about what about post-production? Let's imagine I'm recording content for my course on entrepreneurship, say, and I'm using the LED background to show in real time, real life, uh, the stock price, the ticker price for a, a company that we are studying, say. Um, but at some point, I make uh, maybe a remark that I would like to edit out or I want to make a change. Do you provide support for, for that post-production editing as right. well? Yeah, if it's, a, if it's a video that's going into one of our courses, then we will provide full support for that video. So if it's, uh, yeah, so we are editing video, we're shooting at a, we're, we're, we're starting with the beginning, we're pre-production, we're giving feedback on scripts, we're talking about set design, production design. We're in the studio, we're filming it. And then we're also carrying it through the post-production process, uh, having a round of review with our, you know, with our developers to say, hey, do you want to make changes? And we'll, you know, so it's it's full soup to nuts what, what we're doing with, with yeah. our faculty when it comes to video. The other thing I saw that was pretty cool, um, not right now we're in a very conversational um, manner. You know, we, we don't have a script set, we are just having a conversation on on the capabilities but right. earlier this morning when i visited the studio yeah. i saw that you had a teleprompter so the faculty could as well get help in terms of developing a script even, even the narrative for the course right not that all professors uh, or faculty members would like that but it's certainly something that is available if you rather follow a very strict uh guide or a very strict uh, narrative yeah the one thing i'll say about using a teleprompter, having a script, is that it keeps you honest on the time. Mm -hmm. So I think the taking that time, because it does take a lot of time too to, to write it, but, but knowing that you're going to be able to sort of hone that script to be a certain length, right? I think we tend to sort of, when we're doing something impromptu, we might go off on a few tangents, uh, you know, and, and, and anytime I've ever done an impromptu video, it tends to run long. And so I think the script is one way to really keep us honest and make it nice and concise. Got it. Got it. Perfect. So yeah. as I anticipated, uh, our half hour went by very, very quickly. We blew and, right through it. Uh, we're almost at the end, but I'm sure uh, folks might be interested in reaching out to you. Uh, yeah. If someone wants to connect with you, do you have a, a preferred uh, way to communicate with you? Oh, uh just, I mean, I'm on LinkedIn, so uh, I'm I'm in there in LinkedIn. You're welcome to reach out to me through LinkedIn. Um, and that would be under Matt Lewis. Yeah, it's right? Matt Lewis, and I don't know what, you know, <laughs> I don't really have it. I don't know how to give my LinkedIn profile. <laughs> That's okay, but, but I'm, I'm sure if uh, anyone puts Matt Lewis on a search in LinkedIn and puts CUNY, 
you will be uh yeah, easy I can, to locate. I can pull mine up. I have it. Do you go mind. by Matt or Matthew? Uh I mean, officially it's Matthew, but I think I'm just Matt. Yeah, I'm just Matt Lewis Matt, on the yeah, on LinkedIn. I see you there in the background. Yeah. Let me just do yeah. a, a close up for you there. Yeah, here. Wow. I'll stand to the side. Wait, I'll go this way. A younger, a younger version of Matt Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> hey, are you saying I look old? No, 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 no. You, you look more <laughs> just, experience. More experience is what you look. Uh, let's see here. I think it's Matt's ID is my is my sort of handle. M A T T S I D. So it's Matt's ID. But Great. yeah. Okay. I'm on LinkedIn. I, you know, I, I maybe should uh, update my profile here with a banner. It looks pretty boring. Uh, I will be giving a, a training on LinkedIn fundamentals soon. So if you would like to participate, oh, I'm taking it. I will be uh, it. glad to do so. I've done it, uh, <laughs> I did it the last year. Oh, Ruru was so nice as to include it in the comments section on LinkedIn. So, uh, oh, good. hey, Ruru. There you go. See? Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Matt. This has been great. Uh, really enjoyed it. I can only anticipate you will be doing a lot of testing, a lot of experimenting with the LED background. Uh, I look forward to awesome material and content being developed. So uh, for everyone who has joined us today, thank you so much for participating. We're going to have an interview hopefully every Tuesday. Uh, next week, we're going to have our CIO, Chief Information Officer, Bronwyn Stein, uh, in the interview series. And I look forward to, to seeing you soon. So, Matt, best of luck. Thank you for your excellent and hard work, Sharon. Thank you so much for handling the camera so aptly and uh, professionally. And uh, I will see you soon. Take okay. care. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.